last in the present series of Fantasy Football League. This week we reveal our first ever league champion. And all three title content contenders, John Monson, <laughs> 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 Three title contenders, John Motson, Basil Brosh, and of course him, are on the show this week. We'll be recreating Pat Jennings's Four Steps to Heaven. And we'll be saying a big hello to Paul McGrath. <laughs> <laughs> hello! <laughs> also tonight, somewhere in the show, we'll be slipping in the words Don Howe. So, uh, keep them peeled. Yeah. <laughs> Something to look out for. Of course, work has now started on the renovation of the kitchen end. How's it going, Stato? Well, it's great. As you can see, it's going to be uh, an all-seater kitchen end uh, next yeah. season. All the standing's gone, but yeah. you know, I'm very, very happy with the way things are going. There's still you look a lot very of wobble happy. around. You've got, but yeah. You've got a very lovely helmet. Yeah, well, you need protection. <laughs> I mean, you know, like, still work going on here in the kitchen end. It's a sad day for everybody, the closing down of the kitchen end. It is. It is. <laughs> look, that's a, is that a tear? Yeah. yeah. It is. Sad, that sad is day. Sweat. <laughs> just calm down. <laughs> There's an, there's an end of term in it tonight. Isn't there? <laughs> News this week that Juventus plan to buy French international Basil Bolly, probably the most excitable player in Europe. Here he is slightly querying a ref's decision. Uh, yeah, but, but things went wrong when, after being invited to watch a Juventus game, Bolly became so excited that he actually exploded. <laughs> the only Sad person life. more excited than Basil Bolly this week was a contestant from Gladiators, who, unfortunately for him, had turned up in completely the wrong place. <laughs> In case you were wondering why we were on Match of the Day this week, we only did it to get this secret picture of Des Lynham without his makeup on. <laughs> <laughs> but a nice yeah. bloke, a nice yeah. bloke. Well, I'm very pleased this week, actually, because uh, someone who watches the show in Holland has sent me this rude hullet hat. What do you think? Smart. <laughs> yeah. and, and someone who, who watches the show in Oldham sent me this uh, Andy, Andy Ritchie hat. <laughs> <laughs> Very life. Yeah. Smart. Did you have a good weekend, by the way, Frank? Well. <laughs> Three weeks running, still no laughs. <laughs> now, as regular viewers will know. That's <laughs> the me. title of your autobiography. <laughs> <laughs> As regular viewers will know, Fantasy League manager and fellow Chelsea fan Roddy Doyle has predicted this season that in the Cup, Chelsea would lose against Oxford, then he said they'd lose to Wolves, then he said they'd lose to Luton. <whistles> oh, who can that be? <laughs> Hello? Oh my goodness, it's Roddy Doyle. <laughs> Chelsea will definitely lose to Manchester United. Oh, thank you, Roddy. By the way, why didn't you come on and tell us that in person? Every time I come on your show, that gobshite Max Bygraves barges in and starts doing his stupid songs. I mean, I just had enough. Hey, Pardon! Pardon! Oh, just thought I'd pop in for a bit of a sing-along. <laughs> oh, no, you've broken the commitments, BAFTA. He's got four eyes. He won the Booker Prize. Paddy Doyle. Paddy Doyle. We're in the World Cup, we're in the World Cup, you're not, oh. you're not. Oh, we have to all right then, sir. Yeah. Oh dear, Paddy got booed. Anyway, so where are the guest managers? I don't know. Sorry? <laughs> oh, I spotted it. <laughs> Let's see what's on the telly. Let's see what's on the telly. So, where are the guest managers? I don't know. Let's see what's on the telly. Uh, they do this every week, right? Something exciting's just about to happen on the telly and then someone will ring the doorbell. Now, hold on a minute. I'd like to see what the joke is for the, for the last show. Oh! oh! Now we'll never know! Oh! I bet it was an absolute cracker as oh, well. I think it was better than the Great Escape one. Possibly. Goodness me, it's Paul Brush and John Monson! Hey! Paul Brush and John Monson, Paul Brush and John Monson, Paul Brush and John Monson. Oh, wow. Oh, 
Hello, the two boys. best Hello. dressed man in British television. You both look fantastic tonight. Well, if we can't win the league, we thought we'd wear the suits, but... But we don't know who's won No, we yet, don't right? know. No. no, we don't know. <laughs> Nearly gave it away there. You did. Nearly. <laughs> Nearly. <laughs> Didn't Alex Ferguson <laughs> say? <laughs> I might have won. Okay. So, that took, but before all that, before all that fantasy league nonsense, what do you think of the actual football season this season? I think it's been really exciting. It's been very enjoyable. <laughs> <laughs> so have you. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to see you after a very boring season. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's a bit harsh. Didn't you think one of the highlights was when the boys appeared on Match of the Day? Did anybody was. think? Yeah. 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 Oh, thank you very much. Oh, a smattering of applause. Thought, yeah. heard of it. That was a single to third man <laughs> applause. That was. <laughs> <laughs> Two to mid-off, that one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we this all night, couldn't we? Anyway, cop final tomorrow. Tomorrow, it is. What do you think? Well, as I was coming into the studio, I met a man in a Chelsea shirt, mm. which is the sort of thing you would do. Yeah. In West London, isn't it? Yeah. Um, and uh, what I didn't realise was he was dressed up, he was actually the public relations manager for a betting firm. He's here as a guest, you see. And he said to me that if Chelsea lead at half-time and Manchester United are winning at full-time, the price against that happening is 25 to 1. Really? Mm. Sounds like a pretty good, good bet. Good bet, isn't it? Yeah. So, you so if it's 1-0 good... to Chelsea at half-time and Manchester United win 2-1, which yeah. is yeah, I un probably going to happen. Yeah, I understood it. <laughs> 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 but thanks for that. You should yeah. go into teaching. A concrete example. <laughs> <laughs> of course, you, you, were, you were part of a, a winning cup final team. A long time ago. <laughs> Oh, West Ham fan in the front, you're getting very excited. When you played in that cup final in 1980. 1980, you were on the bench, in fact, for West Ham when they won it. After West Ham won, what, what happened that night? Was there a big celebration? There was a few big celebrations. Back at the hotel, out hitting the town, I think, from what I can remember. Was it, was it like a big, a big banquet for West Ham? There was. Because I was, I was reading that in the old days in football, they used to have banquets, but, but they weren't, you know, they weren't anything as flashy as your modern day ones. <coughs> and uh, that takes us on to uh, the first in a short series, which is called Old Cup Final Banquets Were Rubbish. <laughs> old Cup Final Banquets Were Rubbish, there were only three blokes there. <laughs> An old Lancashire final tie. A cup final between two good, two good sides. Dixie Dean, captain of the winning side, Everton. And Sam Khan, the trustworthy captain of the Manchester City side. Lancashire. Ace to Lancashire. And may that cup stay in Lancashire. If Everton don't win it, may another Lancashire club win it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Was it like that, your one? <laughs> I don't think so. Because at the end of that, he says, ear, ear. <coughs> Which I always thought someone else was supposed to say when you do a speech. <laughs> but he did his own ear ear just to make sure it went down well. We didn't get a, <laughs> You didn't get to play in that cup. Was that a big disappointment not getting to play in that cup? That's part? probably the biggest disappointment. I'd played in every round yeah. and in the day before I found out I was substitute, so right. it was a, a strange day all round really. Oh, yeah, that must have been. It'd been much better if I'd have got on, but it didn't happen. Yeah. Oh, that's oh, terrible. That's sad. Oh, oh, dear. If it makes you feel any better, Paul, we've had about <laughs> ten letters over the last six or seven weeks saying, who is that gorgeous bloke, Paul Brush, that keeps coming on your programme? It's absolutely true. Yeah. So you're, you're developing a, a, some followers, so we'll, uh, we'll give those to you after, and, you know, you can phone or not. Yeah. <laughs> and you've had a lot, John, as well. Loads of letters, right? <laughs> <laughs> but we've got some tips of you playing, Paul, uh, just to cheer you up. Uh, this is when you were uh, an absolute regular. In the West Ham side. Clearance there you off are. the line. Fantastic clearance off the line. Here's when you're playing on the Somme. <laughs> <laughs> but a great saving tackle. But it's a bit old, all this, so we thought we'd show you something a bit more recent, which you might prefer. This is you playing for Enfield. Enfield are in the yellow shirts against Woking. This was a good goal, this. Yeah, Woking on the attack, and uh, Paul, you'll see Paul in the yellow top coming in with a saving tackle, just throwing it. Oh. <laughs> Top corner with my right foot. It was yeah, brilliant. Got many of them. It was actually voted goal of the season, wasn't That's it? That's why I got a plaque for that, yes. Did you? <laughs> <laughs> oh, People brilliant. are sarky, aren't they? <laughs> <laughs> They're really sarky. I think it's about time we found out what's happened in the league because, I mean, yeah, no, no fair one's enough, been John. allowed to see the league table. Stato has been tight lipped. Yeah, it's been tight kept lipped. under wraps, yeah. Stato's always tight lipped. It's more tight lipped <laughs> than the managers. Yeah. 
Well, only Stato actually You're knows right. the final positions. Have you yeah. worked it out yet, Stat? Actually, it's time for my lunch break. Is it? Oh, dear. Oh! It's <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <thank you. laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> Hello, Hello, Mr. Basil. David, Mr. Frank. How are you? You look very well. Oh, do I uh, feel terrible? Mm. No, do you? I'm sorry to hear that. Well, you've got your little hard you. hat on as well. Pardon? You got I said you've got your little hard hat on as well. Thank God I've got it right, yeah. Hard, I can't hear. Would you like to hear a joke? Yeah, go on. Yes. Well, I love children, don't you? Yeah. Oh, my auntie Frida gives her baby garlic, you know. Hmm. So she can find him in the dark. Well, that's marvellous. But John's right. I think we should we should find out the results. So come on, yeah, Sato. It's time for the final on. countdown. No, 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 no. I said the final countdown. last Friday night, there were only three teams in it. David's The Creator Supremes were top with 182 points, Basil and Paul's PSV Boom Boom were second with 175, and John's Oak Lodge Albion was one point behind Basil on 174 points. After half an hour, the lead changes hands once again. In fact, for the tenth time this season. The combination of strikes for Basil by Sean McCarthy and David White hooks the Fox in with a great chance. Basil takes the lead by one. Meanwhile, John has a dreadful 30 minutes. Kenner, Makin, Watson and Kareen all conceding to leave Motti eight points adrift. After 60 minutes, David is back in front. Goals from Cole and Kelberg help lift my flatmate to 185 points. Goals conceded by Tony Adams, Nick Klosko and Warren Barton push Basil back. After 90 minutes, late goals against Gale of Sheffield United and Kenner of Southampton finally finish off Motti's Championship Challenge. <laughs> A clean sheet, and this goal by Chris Fairclough lift Basil to 184 points. <laughs> then, an assist from Morley, and two points for David. And the goal from Martin Allen. Three points for David, and that turned out to be the clincher. So, after 18 hard-fought weeks, the champions of the 1994 BBC Two Fancy League are David Baddiel's The Creator Supreme. <laughs> Lancashire. Here's to Lancashire. <laughs> and may the cup stay in Lancashire. If Everton does. All right, all right. All right I don't get the message. <laughs> yeah, and David will be presented with the uh, the championship trophy, the famous golden stat. Oh, there it is. <laughs> Marvelous trophy. We'll be getting that uh, at the end of the show. Actually, before we go on, there's uh, someone in the audience, I believe, who is even happier than me about me winning the championship because he bet five hundred quid on me. Is that person around? It's you, is it? Good. Goodness me, it's someone with skulls all over it. <laughs> <laughs> That's a bit frightening. It's in memory of Oxford getting relegated. Right. Yeah, um, that, that was a shame. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was a shame. <laughs> and uh, considering all the stuff you do with Dire Straits, I don't think you need them. <laughs> so you put 500 quid on David. At what price was that at? Uh, eight to one. Eight to one? So that's what, 4,000 quid? Yeah. Can I have some of them? 4,000 quid someone won on me. I feel like a horse. <laughs> you smell like one, don't you? <laughs> that's a very good bet. Well chosen. Someone had 500 quid on me, actually. But mm -hmm. um, hopefully you won't be on the car park when I leave. <laughs> so uh, now let's have a look at the final league table. It's exciting, isn't it? Yeah, that's it. That's you won, apparently. I guess we already know I, that. I did win. Uh, Roddy Doyle sort of came good at the end. Any comments on the... the I thought, yeah, I've got a... Oh, it's an irony that you should win it thanks to a West Ham player yeah. scoring a... You know, when your man here has played for West Ham and he's runner-up because of a goal by one of his... That's right, but it was a great late buy, oh. didn't you? Born him during the season. Yeah, yeah, Martin Allen. Okay. Go on to Martin Allen in a minute, actually, but let's just have a look how the bottom of the 
the league table panned out. Yeah, and I had two West Ham defenders, speaking of West Ham, <laughs> and that might be why I'm there. <laughs> <laughs> and poor old Dave Bassett is relegated twice. <laughs> <laughs> that is a oh, shame. It's a, a double header for Dave Bassett. But he, he, luck, he was Dave. brought in very late for this yeah. one, so he did, he did his best. As you say, Martin Allen was an incredible buy for me because I won the championship by 14 points, and that's exactly what he got for me. If we look at my team, now we can see that. There you go, Allen on, on 14 points. That's from five games playing for me. Yeah. OK, you don't well. <laughs> 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 what about you, Basil? Are you, are you upset about not, not winning it at the end? No. Dear old David. My <laughs> good little old David. Bring it up, Papa. That's all Bryce speaks in tongues. <laughs> <laughs> Terrifying, though. I thought Baz was trying to kiss me for a moment, though. <laughs> Extremely worried. Yeah, Martin Allen, we've actually got um, one of these goals that, that got me that, and he honestly does some, some very weird celebrating after this. We've seen this before, but let's have one last look at it. <laughs> there he goes. <laughs> What's Weird. that noise? <laughs> Does that go with it? Ooh! Is Martin Allen having chicken tonight? Yeah. <laughs> what do you think of celebrations these mean? days? What do you think of the way they've become all sort of orchestrated and people have their own... Uh, don't say it? orchestrated in front of the cat. OK. <laughs> <laughs> it's very edgy. Um, Thank you. Yeah. What, what do you think, of, did, Paul, did anyone ever celebrate like that in your day? Like the way that Ian Wright celebrates now, where sort of sticking his chest down? Not, not that I recall. Yeah. Uh, that's... Uh, it's one of the modern things now. It looks like some of them have been choreographed, do not they? Yeah. See, I prefer mine to be a bit more passionate, really. <laughs> What's that bit of white coming into the edge of the screen there, isn't it? Oh, <laughs> so well, well you had to drag it down into the gutter in front of Basil as well. I'm sorry, Basil. Are you comfy in that sandwich box, Basil? Yeah, it's very comfortable. Oh, Citizens of Earth, we have noticed that you have one of our kind living among you. We have come to reclaim him. But surely Southampton will want some compensation. <laughs> no, no, not Ian Dowie. <laughs> it is one even more strange than he. What? It is not this one. Not after that own goal in the Enfield game. Besides, Brush is a stupid name. It reminds me of that Fox thing that used to be on years ago. What? With Mr. Roy. Hey, just a minute. Hmm, nearly. Might come back for you later. Oh dear, how embarrassing. <laughs> it's that fox thing I was telling you about. Huh? Is he still on? Huh? Here, Basil, you'll like this one. This is the voice of the Mr. Roy. <laughs> oh, it still does the laugh and everything. <laughs> ah, bingo! Stato? Stato? What's the tenant? Where's your Stato gone? Where's your Stato gone? Little Stato gone. Where's your Stato gone? Where's it gone? Where's it gone? Yeah. So, uh, so John, let's have a look at your team. <laughs> that was the end of the kitchen then, isn't it? No, no, we can't leave it like that. <laughs> Where are we? Like What's Where's going on? <laughs> oh, dear. Stato's so taken my team with him. <laughs> let's have a look at the Fantasy League All-Stars team. All right, this is the best players in our Fantasy League throughout the season. There you go. Incredible, that. Got three Leeds United defenders in the back four and only one Arsenal. Who'd have thought that? Look, looking back on your seasons, I mean, was there anything you would have changed anything you'd have done well I, I think I have got to change my defense because although I finish third which presumably means I get into Europe does it yeah it does yeah. <laughs> yeah, good Just looking forward to that um, I considered 141 goals which is far well I mean it's more than Swindon 
<laughs> so, <laughs> that's good going. Yeah. The other thing I think I would change next year is, I think Basil was a, shrew was a shrewd judge to get Paul as an assistant manager. Yeah. I think the job's too big for one person. Yeah. Um, and I'm looking around at all the out-of-work managers at the moment. I've got a short list of two or three, you know, people like Lenny Lawrence and Peter Reid. And next year I'm going to... Or Sooty, perhaps. Or Sooty. Yeah. <laughs> but I think Sooty might get the vote. No, I'm going to have an assistant manager next season, definitely. So, Basil, what about you? What would you say about your season? Well... <laughs> <laughs> oh, God, the aliens have done it to Basil as well. <laughs> I'm melting, I'm melting! <laughs> Well, you've both done incredibly well. Well, all three of you, I should I say, and you've done all right as well, I suppose. Oh, I have done. How I finished yourself? 10th with 88 points, actually. <laughs> all based on the old West Ham defender thing. But you know what they say, Stato's a virgin. Mm. So, uh... <laughs> <laughs> Don't know what to say when he's here. not here anymore. Exactly, well, I wouldn't say it when he was here, obviously, yeah. that might upset him. And now, what might be the last ever Phoenix from the Flames? Well, except that we're doing two on Cup Final Grandstand tomorrow. We are. Anyway, this week, Pat Jennings goes Route 1. So, Pat, it's 1967. It's the charity shield between Cup winners Tottenham and league champions Man United. So, what do you remember about that? Uh, well, they just introduced the four-step route. And I was actually having a chat with Alex Steph and the United keep the right back to the So, what do you reckon, Pat? I thought I might do this with my four steps, right? <laughs> think? Not bad. What about yourself then? <laughs> Ooh, delicate. And this is, this is my big piece. It's the one I've been working on, right? No, that'll never catch on. Not at Man United. <laughs> so, Pat, we're going to recreate the famous goal that you scored that day. In fact, there was quite a bit of controversy at the time, wasn't there, as to whether a goalkeeper could score direct from a drop kick? Yeah, well, actually, Kenneth Wilson home had been discussing the possibility before the game started. And there's nothing in the laws of football that state that a goalkeeper can't score by kicking the ball out of his own hands. <laughs> I thought it's our producer, Alec Weeks, ladies and gentlemen. What have you been up to today, Alec? Well, me and Roy Norton have been writing some rather jazzy music for the end of the show. Gosh, you do everything, don't you? How does it go, this rather jazzy music? Oh, sort of... Oh! <laughs> yes, a fantastic effort. And Jennings has scored for Tottenham. All right, Pat, it's time to recreate the goal itself now. So, uh, Frank, you carry on being Alex Stepney. Um, I'll be Alan Gilzean, who ran in and celebrated the goal, and you be Pat Jennings. OK. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know yet. Give me a few years. I'll work it out. It must have hit a four-leaf clover. <laughs> well, it's not every goalkeeper that can thump a ball that far, is it? So, uh, what happened next? I was bought by Arsenal. Read this letter now. Go on. Yeah. <laughs> this letter is from John Scagliano, who uh, lives in London. He says, Dear Frank and David, I'm an avid follower of the work of Dr. Edmund Cordell, who believes that all of us have another version of ourselves living somewhere else on the planet. Having just come back from America, I saw something there which I think proves this to be true. Spooky. Now the Cubs were playing bad, uh -huh. badly. The Dukes are using them as an example. It's not going well. <laughs> You know, the Albuquerque Dukes needed a good pitching performance from Rick DeRocky <laughs> to stop their three game losing streak. They didn't get it. That's incredible. That's isn't very it? spooky indeed. Oh, you never believed it. Oh my God. Oh, Stato! Oh, oh God, are you all right? Stato, are you all right? Stato's fallen on battle. <laughs> oh, dear. Oh, no. He's got all septic. And so, Stanley Matthews was the only player to play. 
in four decades. Of course, until Billy Meredith. Oh, oh my God, <laughs> shut up! No wonder you're a virgin. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Are you alright, Stan? Oh, you look terrible, actually. <laughs> okay, <laughs> let's leave it there. You look sort of right, actually. There's nothing <laughs> about that that's right. Well, I think that's all we've got time for. Hey, just, just a minute. I haven't done, I haven't told Dr. Took yet. Oh, come on, Stan. <laughs> we won't Come understand it, but go on, anyway. go on. Right, right. What were Tarzan's last words? I don't know, Basil. What were Tarzan's last words? Who put grease on that vine? Ha <laughs> 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 marvellous way to go out. Yeah. Well, thanks to John, thanks well to Paul, and of course, thanks to Basil. And now, we close the series with one final TV sports spectacular. To present the trophy to David, we've got the golden girl of Sky Sports, Anna Walker. Please, Anna Walker. the golden voice of BBC Sports, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Tony Gobber. Fantasy Football League returns later in the year. Now then, now then.